Let's take a look at a question where we need to account for shares that are issued on a subscription basis. Bunny Inc. sells 1,400 common shares on a subscription basis at $65 per share on June 1st and accepts a 45% down payment. On December 1st, Bunny Inc. collects the remaining 55% and issues the shares. Prepare the company's journal entries. Okay, so we've got um, June 1st. So the first date that we've got here is June 1st. Let's just make this pen work. Uh, June 1st here. So we're going to say our first journal entry is, and we've got, what do we have? We've got 1,400 shares at $65 per share, which is going to be 1,400 times $65. This is going to be $91,000 worth of shares, but we're only going to accept. So the down payment is going to equal 45% times 91,000. So we're going to actually get cash of $40,950. Okay, so what are our journal entries going to be? So on June 1st, the, the date that we issue these, the, what we uh, present the subscription offer, we are going to record debit subscriptions receivable. Credit common shares subscribed. And we'll talk about this in just a minute. And this part's really important. It's not just common shares, it's common shares subscribed. It's really important to alert the leader that the reader that the common shares have not been issued. These are simply subscribed or promised common shares. So this is going to be the entire 91,000 to start with. And so the again, from the lecture, just to recap, the reason that we're showing subscriptions receivable. Um, as an asset here, and then we've got common shares subscribed, is we want to make sure we've got really transparent financial reporting. And so we're specifically not just crediting the capital shares uh, account, we're, we're crediting capital shares subscribed, alerting the, lead, the reader to know that these shares are not yet issued. And we've got the receivable, receivable for the 91,000. So then we actually received cash again on June 1st we received the 45% down payment. So we're going to go debit cash, credit subscriptions receivable. And again, you could have done this net, but this just keeps it a little bit cleaner. And then we're gonna have our 40,950. So we're decreasing the receivable on our statement of financial position and we're recognizing the cash that we received. And again, the entire amount still showing as common shares subscribed, so we haven't actually issued any shares yet. Then on December 1st, when Bunny collects the remaining 55%, we're going to record we're going to first record the settlement of the subscriptions receivable. Again, just grossing up the journal entries here to keep it really simple. And how much should they owe? So they owed the difference again between the 91 and the 40,950 that we have that we received before. So 91,000 minus 40,950. So they owe us the balance is going to be 50,050. So this is what this entry is going to be, 50,050, the difference that they owe us to get us to that 91,000 total price. And then the next thing we're going to record is the issuance of the shares, because these are still all in this common shares subscribed account. So now that we've received the full amount that's owed for the shares, we're going to record debit, common shares subscribed, common shares subscribed, removing this account from the equity section of our statement of financial position. 
And now we are actually going to credit common shares. So this is a capital account, again, in the equity section, 91,000. And this alerts the reader to know that these shares have actually been issued. So now we've got share capital, not just common shares subscribed. So this is being removed and the, the credit now is being recorded to this common shares account.